Look at this goober. Look at this humahani. Look at this, what's it? What the hell is this thing? For adjusting something? What is this thing? What are you? Ah! Welcome back once again to OIO Racing, where old school smarts beat big budget starts nearly every time. I'm Ian, this is Dale, my 1972 Celica, and this time around I'm going to show you about four to five days of work that I put in trying to make the new 18RG motor that I swapped into the car do motor things. We're going to be working on various different pieces, maybe in order, maybe not in order, and uh, hopefully get this motor doing some fueling and airing and sparking and vrooming type of things here in the next episode, so stay tuned for that. While I've got you for a minute before we start, if you could, if you've watched a few of our videos, you like what you see, give this one a like as well. Please smash that like button. The thing should have lit up on your screen somewhere if you're watching on your phone or on your... Smash that like button. Smash it. Smash the like button. I like saying it over because it makes it light up. And then also give us a subscribe if you would. Yeah, it really does help out uh, to get us into the algorithm. And as I always say, Lord of mercy, yes, we have got to please that algorithm. So, let's proceed into the land of alternators and water pumps and catch cans. You know what a catch can is? I do now. Awesome. So let's, you know, get her going. Uh, I have a distributor, and what needs to be done with the distributor is we got to take out the guts of this one, the points from this one, and replace it with the Petronix ignition that is inside of that one right there. So I think I'm going to just take that whole distributor off so I can deal with it, you know, not crouched over. We'll bring it back over here and strip everything apart and then put the two things together. That's my plan anyway. So uh, yeah, I'll just get started on that. Okay, that about does it for the distributor for now. Just need to clean this up and label some of these parts, maybe put some of them back in the original distributor and make sure that we know where everything goes. And I have a hunch that I'll be swapping over to these points later when the <laughs> Petronix doesn't work the way I expect it to. I'd say I need to take the fuel pump off and start working on those fittings again, taking it all apart and figuring out what fittings I'm going to need in order to make a 90 come up this way with the return still coming out this direction. So we need, I feel like we need one fitting to rule them all. So what we're gonna need is something with this size fitting on the left, capped off on this side, and then two barbs coming off preferably at a 90 degree angle from one another. And that will get us the fuel that we need from the pump. What else is there to do today? And if we take a look, I figured that out, but I haven't done it yet, but it's not here. That's still on the way, should be here in the mail, hopefully today. That obviously is what we just talked about. Hmm. I feel like that back there is, uh, is the water outlet. Yeah, that's the water outlet. Now I remember that this is a problem. I need a fitting to go in there to hook the, I don't, I'm not sure which one's in and which one's out, which one's uh, in and which one's return. These heater hoses are garbage too, so I should probably get rid of them. Yeah, okay, well, so uh, fitting there, that's, uh, we need to add that to the list. Rear head. water fitting. That is probably some of the worst handwriting I've ever put onto a windshield. One of these two, top or bottom, you let me know, is the input to the heater core. And that's gonna come from there after the water has come out of the block hot. And the other one, the other hose, is going to come back to the water pump down here to the return. Okay, so this could send a hose up up and around that way, up and out this way, 
down there, up and out that way, and over to that fitting, which should be facing the other direction in order to receive it. I need to look at some 18RG pictures and see what I can see as far as coolant routing is concerned in that situation. And I can proceed with this pump, but we still need to get the impeller off so that we can put a new one on that has a flange for the pulley, and then hopefully we'll find the pulley. I think I emailed Rick about the impeller, and I haven't heard back about that, so I need to double-check on that at Toy Head Auto. And then I had a couple of people saying that they may have the pulley that bolts on. Awesome. <clears throat> That's the RGEU pulley. Uh, thanks so much to everybody who's chimed in and helped me out so far. Uh, if we can get this impeller off of here and, you know, undo... Remove all this crap just like this one is over here. Then we'll get a new impeller and get a pulley, hopefully, from somebody, or maybe we make one. I don't really know. And then we'll be in business uh, for an electric fan setup. So let me proceed with removing this impeller, I guess. Okay, look at that. <clears throat> My guess is that that's an aftermarket unit, what with its bends and whatnot, and this is cast, but there's a lot more fins on this feller. We got eight more fins, or eight fins here, six fins over here. So which one of these works better, all right? That's a fun question, uh, but I'm not using either of them, and then I'm not also not using this one. Uh, why is the gasket so big? I do not know, but uh, I think we're going to go ahead and assume that this is the right guy. We might clean it up a little bit and make it look nice. <sighs> Ooh, toasty. 75 degrees yesterday, 15 degrees today. Makes a lot of sense. Hello, I'm back again. Got some stuff. Got my water. It's going to be a big day. I forgot the balance bar, so I can't do that. Cause I'm an idiot, but I do have the new plate with the breather hose in it for the crankcase ventilation all the way from Oregon. And here we have it, the new crankcase breather, not new, obviously from an 18RG, uh, which is awesome. Jake out of Oregon sent that to me. So that plate can be replaced. You see that plate right there? Matches that plate over there. So we're going to take that one off and we're going to put that one on and hopefully there's a good gasket or a good-ish gasket behind that one. And if there's not, then, you know, maybe some RTV that I clearly don't have will go in place. Awesome. Great. It's always good realizing while you're filming that you don't have what you need. Well, I'll do it anyway. Okay, so it took a while to scrape that plate off. I uh, had to use a pry bar and get a little bit forceful with it, but it came off of there. It's now on the floor because I don't want to pick it up. In the process, I also had to remove the oil filter housing because it was blocking a bolt and I broke the gasket on the oil filter housing. So we get to replace that. Good time. Seems easy enough to make, but I'd like to source one if I can. Speaking of gaskets, also broke the one on the plate, of course, uh, but the new breather has a gasket on it already that seems serviceable. So I'm going to just stick with that and see if it works, and it'll work until it doesn't. When it leaks oil, then I'll take it off and replace it. But for now, I'm going to just strap that on, and then I'll see what I can do about a gasket on the oil filter. I might have some gasket material somewhere. I don't know. I'm now relatively PO'd at my camera setup, what I have going on and my microphones. and I, Again, filming this crap while I'm working on it makes it twice as hard and twice as dumb. I already don't know what I'm doing, and I also have to film it and make it. You know what? How about you tell some friends that I'm making this stuff? And I don't tell, you know, tell them if, that I'm complaining about it too, right? I don't care what you tell them. Just tell them to watch because you got to make it worth it. This is, it's just not worth it to deal with the extra hassle on top of trying to figure this stuff out. Speaking of figuring this stuff out, there's the breather plate. Back on with the original gasket, definitely going to leak. There is the oil filter housing gasket material removed and ready to have a new gasket applied. 
which I obviously do not have. I appear to have found some gasket material. Felpro, good stuff. So I may go ahead and make the gasket for this thing because I'm here. I ruined it today. I might as well fix it today. That's what I'm thinking. What else could I do, though, in the meantime? We have cables to run from the choke mechanism and also the gas throttle cable on the gas pedal. Those are two things that I want to get started as well. I'm doing that thing where I like stack up all the stuff and I have like an overwhelming sense of dread that all of this stuff has to be done and that I don't want to do any of it. Y'all get that? I don't like that. Um, I guess it's time now for you to watch me make a gasket. So, uh, you know what? Just watch me make a gasket. I guess here I am making a gasket. This is how you make a gasket. You have gasket material. You roll it out. You cut it. You punch holes in it. You pretend to know what you're doing. And hopefully in the end, biggity bam, gasket. Probably doesn't look good. I don't know. I'm recording this before I've made the gasket. So knowing myself, it definitely doesn't look good. Definitely not. But it will work. Probably. Maybe not. Who knows? Okay, we're back where we were before I messed things up, plus a breather tube. So that's good. Uh, progress has been made. I feel like I could go to the MSD and start figuring out how I'm going to mount it. Thank you to YouTube friend at Cody Powers Lives, who sent me a comment saying that he had a video from a long time ago. It's like 11 years old you know, potato quality, because that's what we had back then, right? And um, he put his MSD box right here, and he uses MSD blaster coil. You don't need an igniter when you are working with this, so it replaces all of this stuff, and you just have your coil and your box. I like the MSD box right there, but something tells me that I need to have it inside the cabin. And that's because I've seen it on other race cars. I've seen it on Ryan's um, A86 and now also the MGB. And on this little beauty that I also did not build. Down here, along with all the paint cans and extra suspension parts and etc., there is an AccuSump. And up there in the corner, I don't know if you can see it, but there is the MSD. It makes sense to me to get that MSD box inside and route the cables out under the hood. Because, you know, you never know. I might be racing in the rain with this car at some point. I would love for this car to end up, you know, doing vintage racing things. And when there are vintage racing things to be done, then you race in the rain. And you race whatever the weather is. So I don't want it getting wet, that MSD box. I think the very first thing that I can do is just remove the old coil. And, uh, you know, whatever that box is. I can't remember what it is. Starter... Is that the starter relay? Hmm. You know, I don't know what I don't know. So I don't know what that is, but uh, I'm going to pop it off of there for right now. Well, there's a lot less here now. So that's good. See what we can do about putting an MSD coil back in place and then, you know, look at the box and stuff. Just kind of figure it out. All right. Here's what I know. We got the... Positive or negative hooked up there, and I believe this is our original positive to the coil, original negative to the coil. As you can see, we're gonna we're gonna wire up those to the red and the white, and then we're gonna run the heavy red and the heavy black. They go back over to the battery. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and snip, snip, and uh, crimp, crimp some stuff on, and uh, make some connectors there, and then uh, we'll be ready to talk about. Well, the battery tray is a whole other issue. All right, it's become very clear to me that I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and take a step back and uh, maybe invite Ryan over and see if he wants to work on this MSD because he has done this stuff before, and maybe he can help me figure out uh, what is what. I kind of get the gist, but I also know that to under actually understand what's going on, I'll have to look at a wiring diagram, and those are like a different language to me. Well... I did that. I removed the battery tray, and now this is what we're left with. Honestly, I've seen worse. Um, it's it's bad, but it's mostly surface rust. Might be a little soft right there, but oh man, it's pretty good. 
it's pretty good. A lot better than I thought it would be. So I'll vacuum that up, clean that up. Maybe we'll get a wire cup in there and uh, sand some of this stuff down. And I think I'm just going to do rust conversion on it. And then we'll probably build a new tray because this one is pretty much roached. Um, yeah, she's done. But it bore the brunt of the rusting. But I think if I build a tray that, you know, bolts in there and bolts there, then I can make a nice platform for the smaller battery over here and an oil cooler out over there. I'd like to throw on the brakes here for a moment, if I may, and talk about your friend and mine, positive crankcase ventilation, otherwise known as PCV. From stock, most cars have in place a system to ventilate the unburnt gases and pressure that's built up in the block via the PCV system. What the system normally does is separates the oil from the air coming out of the block via a valve of some kind. And this motor, like any other motor, had those systems in place from the factory. While that's all well and good, the PCV valves can fail, or even just without them failing, they can still pass oil back through, and the vacuum from the intake is used to draw those gases out. Also, the oil particles come out with it. And then those get put back into the intake after the carburetor. That means they're put back into the cylinder to be hopefully burned again, which means you're either burning a little bit extra fuel or you're burning oil or both because of that. This can cause, you know, stuff to build up. Nastiness, carbon, etc., on your valves and otherwise uh, coming from these ventilated gases and mixed in oil. Enter the catch can. A catch can is a different type of PCV system that allows the gases to vent out through a filtered vent in the can while collecting the oil in the bottom of the can. And then there's also a drain at the bottom so you can reclaim that oil and just dump it right back into your motor if you want to. Might have a little gas in it though, so maybe you just throw it away, you know? Hey, it's up to you. Um, in any case, I decided to go the catch can route for this, not because I care more about this engine and it's valuable, I don't want it burning, so I don't want to get it. That's all that's well and good. It's gonna be a high performing engine. I want it to stay clean on the inside, but mostly I'm doing it because the original PCV system is a little bit janky and it causes vacuum hoses to be running everywhere. And I just wanted something that looked cleaner looks a little bit more racy and then also yeah keeps the motor clean hooray but in this case it came up as an option and i went for it because i didn't know anything about it and now i do i just explained it to you rather poorly now if you want to see a good explanation you can go watch engineering explained or probably countless other videos where they do a much better job of explaining but come back and then like this video smash the like button smash it smash the like button smash the like button is that thing lighting up down there Smash it. Smash the like button. Smash that like button. Go ahead and hit that like button. Smash the like button. You had enough yet? Also subscribe. I'm back in action here. I've got the catch can. I'm taking a look at where this thing might fit in. Um, uh, it needs to be up high so the oil doesn't run downhill to it. Um, but it can't be so high that it hits the hood. So... My location that I think I'm going to put it is right here, underneath this little lip. The filter will go above that lip. The can itself will go below that lip. And then the piping will all clear the carbs. I'm not really sure which way I'm gonna take that piping. The top one will go to the breather on the head. Bottom one will go to the breather on the crank. And that is what we're looking at. So I think I'm going to figure out how to mount this sucker. It's funny, there's some holes back there already. I think what I'm going to do is drill some holes and put in some riv nuts, and then I'll be able to attach this sucker to the firewall. Ew. <laughs> Sound up a little proud. Cheer that woodpecker. Uh, after that, I'll be able to 
play with some of the hoses and whatnot for the catch can and start routing some things and see how we're going to attach them to the barbed fittings and then also the top crankcase fitting. I have no idea how I'm going to adapt those fittings to AN fittings. So um, this is a new territory for me, but um, I'm willing to tackle it for the sake of not having PCB and actually, you know, getting rid of oil instead of putting it back into the intake. Okay, much like anything I've ever put together in my whole life, it's uh, crooked. Great. And it's way too shiny. It looks too new for this engine bay. We'll have to just let it get covered in dirt and stuff. But it turned out that when I went to drill, there was already a hole over here for an M6 uh, that was plugged with some rubber. So we just used on that guy. I mean, it was almost in the right location. Just had to scooch it over inboard a little bit, which not a big deal. So I used that stock hole, and then I made this new hole, you know, probably three millimeters lower than where it needs to be. Hoses are going to run where they run. I hope they don't have to run into the carburetors, but, you know, we can always make them go that way and down and under and up and over and, you know, whatever we need to do. So let's start working on that hose routing now. I almost forgot the elephant in the room that we have not yet talked about. That filter is probably going to hit the hood. Luckily, you know, there's smaller filters. There's a lot of things I could do there. But I, I went and looked at the hood, and it looks like, you know, it slopes down there, and then there might be some support that comes back into this area, but we're just going to have to find out. I think the first line of defense would be to shorten the rubber on this. I can't shorten it too much, though, because the filter sits right near that ledge right there. So... There's a little bit of wiggle room, but not a ton, so. All right, let me make some hoses. The hose I cut originally was for the lower section. It was not long enough. So I shifted, and that's gonna be the upper hose, I think. And then I figured out a routing for the lower hose that takes it by the intake manifold. I'm not sure I love it. I'm gonna run it by some people and see what they think, but uh, that's what I think I'm gonna do. So I cut it the only way that I could presently, which is with the wheel of death, and that, you know, is not, probably not the best. So I'm still not clear on how you hook this hose to a barbed fitting, but I mean, the worst case, it's a clamp. And then we're done. Same up here. You know, worst case scenario, clamp it. But I don't really want to clamp that one. I might cut it a little shorter and then put on if I can put on a 45 degree angle fitting, I guess I need one that does a 90 from here and then angles out that way, uh, like this, I guess. And then that would hook up like that, and that would leave me room to get the spark plug out whenever I need to, and uh, I think it would be low enough profile. It would look pretty good. Um, I'm okay with that hose running across there. I wasn't okay with the hoses being in front of the carburetors because, it, you know, they wouldn't fit. I mean, somebody's probably going to tell me that this is dumb anyway because it's just going to burn the hose or whatever, but I'm going to ask. I'll ask around. See what folks think. What do you think? Is that going to burn? Is it just going to roast and burn? Am I going to burn up the oil that's coming out of it before it ever gets to the can? And then this one down here. Uh, for now, I, I'm thinking I'm just going to slap it on that barbed fitting and put a clamp on the end of it. I don't really care that it doesn't have an AN10 on the end of it. I'm not that fancy. Yep. Put a nice kink in the hose. That's important. You have to properly kink your hoses. And you'll note that I did not put a clamp on it yet because, you know, I want to do that over again. That looks pretty freaking slick, man, if I do say so myself. And if we grab our beautiful 40 millimeter Makuni carburetor, we can see that it's going to go on the flange right past that hose. And I think that's real pretty. And I think we'll also be able to build an air box out front here and not have those interfere too much. As you can see, there will definitely be clearance issues. As you can, that's the top of the catch can right there. So if I had this to do over again, and I, and I do, because you know this was 30 or 40 bucks, buy a catch can that 
the that the you know that comes out that way. And what I can still do is, you know, modify this one, maybe, maybe cut the bracket off. I bet it's probably spot welded on there or something. I'd have to take it off to find out, but could cut the bracket, turn the whole thing sideways. Uh, that would be pretty cool if I did that because, you know, that'd be fabrication and, you know, I don't do that. So I'm going to add fabricator to my resume. I can't. I'm afraid that'll have to be all for today because I have to once again urinate and there is no bathroom in this shop. Something I need to rectify. Just really need a hole in the wall and a funnel. Hose. Moving on to the balance bar for the carburetors and filling in all those holes with JB Weld and smoothing it out because we don't need all those holes and we can't find hardware to fit in them. So let's get to fill in. So I decided that I would use a two-part JB Weld system to seal up these holes. I have this high heat epoxy and just rolling it up into a ball, you gotta knead it pretty good to get the activator working. And this stuff's pretty old, so uh, hopefully it works fine. And I just shoved it in the holes and then made a little indent uh, in each of them that you can see here um, so that I can fill it with a different two-part JB Weld over the top which is more of a paste than a putty. It should be good. We gotta let it sit for 24 to 48 hours and then we can fill it with the other stuff. We've got the fuel pump that still needs a 90 degree angle in it. And I got this 90 degree fitting, which is actually not the right fitting, but the fitting that was in it wasn't the right fitting. This is, uh, you know, metric threads and they're metric tapered threads. This is going to be a standard thread, which is not the right thread, but um, <clears throat> what this needs to do is come out and go up to feed the carburetors. Then it needs a T. You know, one line goes to the carbs. The other line is going to come back to feed the return. Ew, boy. There we go. We're just going to have that sucker going straight up like that, and we're going to get, you know, um, some nice hose and clamp it onto that barbed, you know, fitting that's from the hardware store that's meant for home plumbing or some shit like that. So, a lot of searching done there, but I think this is the solution. I need to wrap it in Teflon tape, obviously, before I go on from here. Um, maybe we just do this now. The fuel pump no longer interferes with the distributor. Even with a hose on, it'll be fine. It's not all the way bolted down yet, so it'll be even further back back there. So it won't interfere. Fun noises. But I'm just now noticing that the distributor doesn't actually turn. There's a slot on the distributor. It's supposed to be able to move, and it can't actually rotate. It can't rotate because it hits against the, uh, the timing cover, that is. Now, the timing cover is the RG EU timing cover. And I've been told that this is probably the REGEU distributor, but this fact makes me think that it's wrong, or that the distributor is clocked. Funny. If that's a thing, is that a thing? I have no idea. I keep running into snags, so I figure I'll try to tackle something that I know I can do, which is not pertinent to the engine at all, but it'll make me feel better. That rust down there needs to be mitigated. So here's our chosen mitigator. <clears throat> cheap. So I want to strip off all the rest of the bits there that are kind of blocking the way from me painting. I want to make sure we're nice and clean over here. And then I'm going to maybe wire cup some of this stuff if I can, wire brush, get out as much of that junk as I can possibly get out of there. Maybe use a rust flapper guy if I have one. And then we'll just hose it down with rust reformer. Because Toyota used rust red primer. It's kind of hard sometimes to know if what you're removing is rust or primer. But uh, this is about as clean as I'm going to get it. I mean, I'm actually going to clean it, too, with some paint prep stuff. And then well, we'll douse it. Okay. A um, little bit hard to see, but all coated in there with rust converter. Two light-ish coats. Uh, I dried it in between with the heat gun just to give it a little bit of uh, you know 
quick flash and then um, it said two light coats a couple minutes apart a little cold in here so I figured I'd dry it up a little bit so this is just a temporary stopgap measure there was rust there I didn't want there to be rust there I put rust reformer on it so there's less of, of a chance of it spreading maybe there's a there's a great video out there about how all the rust converters uh, compare and rust-oleum comes out pretty high on the top of that list even though it's really cheap so I figured what could it hurt to stop the rust for now eventually of course I'd like to come back and strip the whole motor out and redo the whole bay just as we should redo the rest of the car what I my vision for this car is that from the outside it stays relatively original with its paint and chips and such and then maybe some touch-ups on the bumpers making those look silver and doing some of my own touches on the outside inside the car and in the engine bay I feel like they could be cleaned up and modernized in the future but for now as I've said many times it's sweaty it's just as sweaty as the rest of the car and uh, this is you know a sweaty racers fix but our goal here is to build a new platform in the corner here for the smaller battery and an oil cooler to sit on and we'll take out this headlight have the oil cooler behind it take out this headlight have an intake behind it that runs up behind the carburetors feeds the carbs uh, some beautiful air so I did a few things today not a lot but a few we did the air balance tube which we can't mark it off yet of the list uh, because it's not done but we got to this guy can you see that I have no idea if you can see that we got to this guy we did this, but it's not also still not done because I need a T for return, and I'd like to plumb the whole thing before I call that done because fuel is required for the engine to run. Water pump. Haven't come back to that situation. I did get an email from Rick. I need to follow up with that about how he can ship me the impeller with the right thing on it. We can maybe source the pulley. Who knows? But that's underway. MSD Ryan's going to come over one day and help me out with that, and uh, I'm hoping that... You know, that's just magic. We'll just, we'll say, hey, it's not done, and then we'll snap our fingers and it'll be done. And then we've got this guy, the rear head water fitting is on the way from Spain. Might be here soon, might not. Okay, it's uh, first round of JB Weld, the uh, putty stuff. I don't even know what to call this stuff, but it's set up, and now we're going to use this second round, of the two-part stuff, to just make sure that the top is sealed it'll hopefully fill in some of the little divots and cracks and uh, give us a smooth surface to work with so I'll go ahead and mix that up and uh, slap it into the holes and then we'll let it dry up for a couple of days and we'll move on to undoing slash redoing the distributor guts that I did before well here we are again Right back in distributor land. What I did previously was took the guts out of this one, the 18RC distributor, and I put them into this one, the 18RG distributor, or what I thought was an 18RG distributor, because it has a tab on it to be able to um, adjust. But as we saw previously, the tab uh, cannot actually rotate in that slot. So what we need to do is take the advice of Jake Langer, thank you again, Jake, and use the 18RC distributor and you know put my guts back in it and then use the clamp that i've already kind of set up over there uh you know so this distributor can just rotate free underneath the clamp and that might yield some problems in the future but for now this will hopefully get us running so i'm going to go ahead and strip the guts out of here and put them back over here again because you know why not undo what you've done once already I took the caps back off to show you how we've kind of killed two birds with one stone here. So this one being the 18RG distributor, um, it did not want to spring back. See that? So Ryan said, oh, I might have to replace the springs, clean it out, et cetera, et cetera. But this was the old 18RC distributor, which was previously working just fine and is now still. You hear that? Get you close to the mic there. You can hear it, but yeah. Uh, that's in good shape, but I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and slap it over there on the motor and see if we can't get the clamp set up just right so we can start, you know, having a distributor. All right, so I figure because the orientation previously had the vacuum advance thing on this side, that we'll go ahead and orient this one about the same way for the first go around. So something like that. 
Uh, I don't need this thing, but, you know, it's on there. I'll take it off later, maybe. I gotta get it to go in first. Come on now. Mesh. Mesh with your gears. There she goes. Yeah, there she is. Okay. Uh, again, <laughs> the fuel pump is just right in the stinking way. So, uh, hopefully, this is, this is like, you know... I don't know. I really need a better fitting for that so it does not hit. It's not like that one's dramatically further out. This is the same distributor. Is this guy smaller? I just don't know. All right, well, uh, that sucks, but one thing's for sure. If, um, let's see, if this is retard and, and like, you know, normal is about there, and then this would be as much advanced as I can get, then that would be enough. But if this is normal and I need to advance it past there, then I'm gonna kinda be screwed. But let's put the clamp on. And now does the distributor move? It does not. Much. <laughs> Yeah, it still moves. Let's crank it a little more. This is what I was afraid of, is that this setup won't work the same. No, there we go. We're locked down. She's not moving. Great. Okay. So the clamp works out. The 18RC distributor is in place. How much uh, advance will we need and where will we be advancing it to? I have no idea. I think I'm going to rig this guy back up <clears throat> and just jam the hose down on there for now. All right, that's as good as it gets for right now, you filthy animals. I mean, the problem here is is you want sick looking AN fittings on everything, but you can't get it. Right now I just want it to work PCV. I still don't have those tightened down because I don't have proper tools to do it. Uh, I don't even have two adjustable wrenches to tighten those suckers down. So I'll get that and uh, we'll give those a tighten and um, then the PCV should be good. All right, so today I guess what we accomplished was we put some schmoo down in there. And then we came over here and did our distributor guts, which we put the distributor onto the block. And then we, you know, jammed that <laughs> hose in there. It's not much, but every little bit counts. And once that doohickey is dry, then we'll be on to putting the carburetors on and plumbing up some fuel lines. Need to come back and address the water pump situation as well. I think I might have a handle on that. Nope. Oh, that's where we be. We'll just keep moving forward. So that'll be it for this time. I don't think we're really that far off, if I'm honest. No, if I'm honest, we're still a long way off. If I'm not honest, though, we're, we about got it. Next time when you see Dale, I'm, I'm going to make a promise to you. Big promise. We're going to have him running. Will we drive him? I don't know. I hope so. But come back, listen to that 18RG engine run. And remember, go out and find your own Apex because it's better late than never. We'll see you next time.